Most of the features in Adobe Captivate 2019 are improvements over features that existed before. Uh, for example, the new enhancements given to responsive design fluid boxes. But there is one feature that is truly new and innovative, and that's virtual reality projects. Let me show you. So when you start Adobe Captivate 2019, you'll see, of course, the new project uh, startup area here. And of course, I could select virtual reality project. Uh, I do want to point out that both with responsive projects as well as blank projects, you do have the opportunity to add virtual reality or 360 degree slides into those types of projects as well. But if you're designing a standalone virtual reality project, you're going to want to choose this middle option here. I'm going to click on the create button and we'll start off building that particular uh, style of e-learning. So you'll notice that uh, when you create a new virtual reality project, you'll start off with a single slide and you'll see this slight dotted uh, grid in the background of your slide here. And that's a placeholder for a 360 degree image or a 360 degree video. You can add either one of these by clicking on the plus icon in the middle of your stage. I'm going to import a background here that I've already selected. And by itself, 360 degree images in your e-learning projects are really cool. You can just click your mouse and you can look around the room and explore and do some really cool stuff here. If I click on my properties panel, and take a look at the properties for a 360 degree slide, you'll notice that I can choose between either exploratory or guided. The difference between these is that if I set it up to be exploratory, I can explore all the various aspects of the slide on my own. If I choose guided, it will force me to view one by one all the various interactive elements that I'll be adding in a few moments. So let's stick with exploratory for this particular example here, and we'll start to add some interactive elements to make this uh, truly engaging. So we'll start off by adding a hotspot. Now I notice that there's a piano in the corner there. We can add audio to a 360 degree slide, and we can use a hotspot that indicates that it is uh, a music note. And if I click on this, of course, then I'm given the Actions tab of my Properties panel. And uh, I can choose from any number of on-click actions. For this, of course, I'm going to choose to play some audio. And I can use the Browse icon to find uh, an audio file that's appropriate for this uh, particular hotspot. And of course, every time you add a hotspot, you'll have the opportunity to either Continue the movie at the end of the audio. Uh, this I wouldn't recommend if you have more than one uh, hotspot because, of course, we want to stay on the slide and allow the user to fully explore this page be before being forced to the end of the slide and on to the rest of the project. The other thing you can do, and this fits in with, uh, of course, the idea of a guided uh, virtual reality project, but uh, you can set this up to must view this particular object. So in other words, it will force compliancy that you click on every single hotspot on this particular page. Let's add another hotspot over here, um, over by the balcony there. We can add a hotspot. Uh, let's use an image hotspot. And there we can choose to display an image. And we can browse to that image. I have one in mind here. Now, anytime you have something that displays on screen, you're going to also have the addition of display duration. The default is three seconds, but if you want to allow your users more time to view it, you can override that and enter in a higher number. Let's move over to this area of the screen here. We'll add a hotspot for some additional information. And that would be in the form of text. So we can display some text here. 
text field uh, that's available to you here. You can either uh, type in or paste in the content that you wish to include. And like before, you can also set a specific display duration. I think in this case for that amount of text, I'll go with five seconds. And of course, the continue playing project and must view uh, once options are available to you. I'm going to keep them unchecked in this case. And let's go over here and let's add um, a different type of hotspot. In this case here, we're going to add a question that will be available. And of course, if I click on that, you'll see, of course, the usual on-click dropdown. But instead of choosing that, we're actually going to add questions. And this is going to uh, create an insert questions dialog. And I can select either multiple choice and or true or false and put in as many questions as I see fit. I'm just going to go with one for right now. We'll just do a multiple choice. I'm going to add an additional answer to this one and we'll input my question here. And uh, the correct answer to this question is Ottawa. And I'm going to put two distractors in as well. So there we go. And uh, on the last uh, bit here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a hotspot that's going to continue with the rest of this project. And that's just going to be to go to the next slide. Uh, that also creates a new slide for our quiz results slide. And you'll see, of course, an opportunity to uh, house that on top of a 360 degree image as well. So I'm just going to add that. I'll use the same image as before. It's fine. So we're now ready to either publish this project or preview it. Let's start off with a preview here. We'll just preview the project. And this will open up in your browser window. So let's uh, let's start over here with the piano. We can listen to the piano music. It's very lovely. <laughs> and over here we have a view of the outdoors here. We can click on that and see a preview of what it looks like outside. Again, that runs for five seconds. You can uh, decide whether you want to increase that time or decrease it, whatever you prefer. And let's get some additional information here. We have some text where we can learn a little bit more about this environment. Finally, we'll go on to our question here. And which of the following cities is the capital of Canada? The correct answer is Ottawa. I'm going to hit submit and then continue. And of course, now I can go on to the next slide, which is my quiz results slide. And there we can see that we passed the quiz. So as I said before, this is truly a new and innovative feature for Adobe Captivate 2019. I'm really interested to know how many of you might be using this in the future. So please feel free to share in the comments down below. Uh, some of the ideas where you think virtual reality projects might be really helpful for you and your organization. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at PaulWilsonLD, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.